The sampler's been cleaned. There was loads of metal filings in the bottom of there and sludge and gunk. Um, as you can see, there's no sump plug on these. The only way to drain these is through a dipstick hole, which we tried, but I didn't realise there was two on there. Anyway, it's all clean. Um, just going to put the gasket on. But to make life easy for myself, I'm going to spray some contact adhesive on this. So when I put the gasket on there and try and battle to get it up there, it doesn't fall off. The engine down on the engine mounts on blocks of wood. I haven't put the sample on yet, that's going to go on last. There's a reason for that. So, what I'm going to do now is uh, remove the chain, uh, remove the safety chains as well, uh, get the head back on, and um, put all the ancillary stuff back on, and we'll move forward with the job. And I'll explain why I'm going to put the sample on last. Die grinder tool with a, a soft 3M head which cleans the cylinder heads really well. Uh, it's made of rubber so it doesn't damage the cylinder head and this is cast iron so definitely won't damage it.
Now I need to talk the head down. There's 27 head bolts and there's a sequence in which these are tightened. Um, I have the sequence here, uh, one to 27. But for me to do this in an easier way, say we keep having a look at this piece of paper, going backwards and forwards to make sure I've done the right one, I'm actually gonna number every single bolt and then I'll just go around in, this, in that sequence. I'm gonna use my um, little gun here to gun these up. Um, it, it has a power meter on there, so I'm just gonna stick it on low so we're not talking it up. At least I can screw them down and then get my torque wrench and then do the sequence. Bolts all done. Numbering these made life so much easier than having to keep turning my head looking for numbers and figures where we've got to go. On a normal four cylinder head, uh, it's a lot easier because uh, you've only got uh, bolts, like a pair of bolts in the centre, and there's normally 10 of them. And you'll either do the, the crisscross tightening or spiral. Spiral meaning you'll go around literally in a spiral until you do all the bolts up or you can crisscross like from here to there to there to there to there. Where well, we've got 27 different bolts, um, this requires a different sequence uh, to make sure that the heads torque down evenly. All heads are torqued from the centre out. You never start at one end, it's always from the centre out. Let's get the push rods in and the rockers.
Well, I've kept you in suspense about why the sun was staying off. Um, there was a reason for it, but unfortunately I can't show you that now because um, part of the cooling system hoses aren't here. Uh, what I was going to do, because it's got a, a closed cooling system, um, I was going to fill it up and do a pressure test and we were going to check from underneath where the sump goes to make sure the liners weren't leaking. But because I don't have the hoses and we had that uh, brass union, this one here that had been broken whilst, uh, whilst the engine was coming out, um, which I repaired while it was here. Uh, obviously we don't have that hose either, so which is part of the, the closed loop system. So I can't show you why we left the sump off. <laughs> so now the sump's gonna go on and they're gonna have to test it whilst it's back in the boat. So let's get that back on and get the engine finished. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that video of that Volvo Penta diesel engine repair. Engine is an engine, doesn't matter what it comes out of. Uh, they have their subtle differences in like the cooling system I showed you on that one. We even had Martin, the owner, come down and uh, change a couple of bits on it right near the end, just before I loaded it. If you missed part one of this video, if you just click up in the link, you can see part one. This was quite an interesting job uh, compared to some of the other stuff we do. You don't see a lot of liners in cars anymore. Not removable ones anyway. It was quite interesting for us. I enjoyed it. Um, we we're lucky enough to be able to borrow this forklift from the neighbours across the way. Without it, we would have struggled. Uh, the engine was way too big for our engine hoist, uh, even for our engine stand. We just wouldn't have managed it. So sometimes it's nice to have good neighbours uh, and be able to utilise some of their equipment. As always, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on some of our future videos, or even our past videos. And also hit the bell notification so you're notified next time I upload a video.
Take care, guys. See you soon.